among those who are wondering, uh, curiously, at that about um, whether this was just a political vendetta, Rand Paul, the chairman of the Federal Spending Oversight and Emerging Management Subcommittee, to whom he was eager uh, to have uh, Rick Grinnell address, the acting uh, intelligence official. Uh, uh, Senator, where does that stand? Uh, is Rick Grinnell going to testify to your committee? Have you got confirmation of that? No, but I did send a letter last evening to the Director of National Intelligence, Rick Cornell, and ask him if he would declassify this. And we got this information today and released it. And I think this is astonishing that Vice President Biden and really all of President Obama's inner circle individually were requesting the unmasking of a political opponent. And, you know, you remember there was a whole to-do about trying to impeach a president saying they were using the power of government to go after a political opponent. This is, a, this is a, a smoking gun, if there ever was one, that Vice President Biden was using the power of government, abusing that power to go after a political opponent. Essentially, unmasking someone is the equivalent of illegally wiretapping them. The government had permission to listen to the Russian ambassador, but to protect Americans, we mask their identity. But you got the whole President Obama's inner circle clamoring around, listening to the private conversation, I think illegally, and I think with ill-begotten Ill, Ill motives. Do you know, Senator, whether these unmasking requests then in each and all of these cases occurred after the election. I mean, obviously, the assessment was prior to the election that Hillary Clinton was going to win. Obviously, that didn't happen. So did a lot of this then transpire after the election itself? The document that we got listed all the names and listed the date that they did the unmasking. So Vice President unmasked uh, General Flynn to listen to his conversation, which I think is reprehensible. But so did James Comey, so did James Clapper, so did John Brennan, so did Samantha Powers, and so did President Obama's chief of staff and a dozen other people. So think about this. It's illegal to listen to people's private conversations. You can listen to, if you have a national security matter, a foreigner. But unless the foreigner saying, we're going to blow up the Capitol and will you help me, you don't get to listen to the other person's conversation if they're just talking. So General Flynn was never accused of saying anything untoward, never of saying anything that was committing a crime, but they all listened to his conversation and then they all decided, we've got to get this guy. Let's try to entrap him. Let's try to bring him in and see if we can get him either to lie, make a mistake, statement or we can get him on the Logan Act. So this was a cabal. This was a conspiracy. And really, the question is, did President Obama direct it all or did Vice President Biden? Now, we now know for a fact Vice President Biden was involved and he needs to be questioned on this because we can't elevate someone to the presidency who's willing to use the, the intelligence community to spy on his political opponents. That should be a deal killer. Because the timing is important, Senator, as you know probably better than anyone, that, that uh, the administration, the Obama administration in its waning weeks was uh, slapping punitive measures for their involvement in, in the election. Um, and then, lo and behold, they argue they get wind of, of, of a top uh, Trump aide who is now talking to the Russian ambassador. Would that raise enough concerns to justify them wanting to know more about that? Well, the National Security Advisor's job is to interact with foreign leaders. And uh, I think if you looked at the Obama administration and actually look at press reports, there are dozens of press reports of the Obama administration on the way in when they came in after George W. Bush of them talking to foreign leaders. Uh, there's nothing wrong. In fact, I think it's appropriate to talk to foreign leaders and discuss a wide range. But it should be and is illegal to listen to an American's conversation. And it's even worse if you're listening to an American who just happens to be your political opponent from the opposite party. So, no, this was this was a conspiracy of high ranking Obama officials to try to uh, falsely convict and taint a 33 year veteran of the military. I think it's reprehensible. You know, um, as you've heard, a number of top Democratic officials, Senator, are saying that this is all subterfuge and a distraction campaign led by Republicans. Even this morning in The New York Times, Steve Aftergood, an expert on government classification, was saying it is part of a struggle over who controls the narrative of the investigation of the 2016 election, going on to say it is putting the spotlight on the investigators rather than the investigated. It is saying that the what's irregular here is not the extraordinary contacts with the Russian government, but the attempt to understand that.
What do you say? Yeah, I think what you find is, and what we're finding as we look at the FISA court and these secret courts that were intended to be used against foreigners, that the Obama administration and, frankly, some Republican administrations have turned these organizations that are supposed to be directed towards foreigners and turn them on to Americans. This is an abuse of power. This is a bigger, broader debate. We're now discussing the FISA court and the Patriot Act, and I'm making the point that a secret court that doesn't use the Constitution as its standard should not be used to investigate a presidential campaign. So I have an amendment that I will put forward tomorrow that says it's illegal. Americans would be exempt from this foreign court. And you'd be surprised, the institutional forces around here, many of them still want to keep this because they like this secret court. But this secret court is unconstitutional in the sense that their standard is that you might be working or a probable cause that you're working with a foreign government. The Fourth Amendment says we can't spy on you or get a warrant unless it's probable cause of committing a crime. That's a much higher standard. So that's why I think Americans should not be included in the FISA court. And my amendment would fix this. I don't care if you're a Republican a Democrat or an independent. The intelligence community, the spies should not be spying on Americans and particularly not on American campaigns. Do you think um, that eventually Rick Grinnell will, will talk to your committee? I think we need to get to the bottom of this. I don't know how much longer he's going to be in the intelligence director's spot, but I do think it's important that he declassified this because in his short term over there, he's trying to get to the truth. And is there anything you can imagine why this would be classified? It's classified only to cover their tracks. And this is a problem with classification in general in government. It's overused by the executive branch to cover up crimes and abuse of power. This at the very least was an abuse of power. And because Rick Grinnell was breaking enough to declassify it, we now know that the vice president, Biden, was intimately involved in this. And we have this perplexing question, why dozens, even assistants to assistants, were now looking at this? There's also the question that others are bringing up. Samantha Power did this over 200 times. And when she was asked about it, she said she didn't remember most of those and didn't think she really did it. Well, if she didn't do it, who did it? And who could have the power to unmask people, listen and eavesdrop on them without telling their boss? I mean, this is an enormous power and it needs to be curtailed. So for me, this isn't about politics. This is about abuse of power. And while we should always try and strive hard to limit government power, particularly with these spy agencies. Now, Rick Grinnell is free to decline talking to your committee. Uh, could you force the issue? My committee doesn't have subpoena power, but I think he's already done a great service by releasing this, by declassifying this, and we're getting closer to the truth. I think now one of the... By the way, he declassified this, Senator. Could I understand, did you then release the, the, the declassified material to the public? Yes, I released this about an hour ago. I requested this okay. from him by letter when it was released and we got the information. We released that today. And so I'm proud of the fact that uh, he stepped up and did something that I think we need more of in government, and that is to shine a light on what goes on. And when people use government right. in a corrupt fashion, to shine a light on it. Senator, thank you very much for taking the time. Senator Rand Paul on this.